In this video, I'm going to describe the model we're going to use for tension. Tension is any force arising from, say, a string, a rope, a wire, or a chain. We usually indicate tension with a capital T, there's the vector sign over it, and I might write that in, a, in our phrase, the tension force on the block by the rope. The tension is the type of force, the block would be the object in this case, and the string or rope is the agent exerting the tension force. The first thing about the tension force is it connects two objects, but the string is the agent. So in this case, there's a force on mass 1 due to the string, or maybe a force on mass 2 due to the string. The tension only pulls, it never pushes, and the magnitude is zero unless the string is taut. So here I've drawn the tension on mass 1 away from mass 1 because a string is pulling on it, or the tension on mass 2 is away from mass 2 because the string is pulling on mass 2 as well. Also, the length never changes. So if the strength has some length L, L is a constant. So let's get to the model itself. The tension is a force, so it must have a magnitude and a direction. The magnitude can be anything. There is no formula for the tension model. It has some magnitude, but we don't know what that magnitude is unless we're given what it is or unless we can calculate it from the problem itself. The direction is away from the object, remember the tension is always pulling, and it is along the line of the string, okay, that makes sense, at the point of contact. The thing about a string or a wire is it can bend, and so the direction of the force is going to be along the line of the string or the wire at the point of contact. For example, if someone is pulling this string, the string is 20 degrees above the horizontal, I would say that the tension force on the mass, in this case, would have some magnitude, T, I don't know what it is, in units of newtons, that's my unit there, and the direction would be 20 degrees above the horizontal. Or in this case, I have an object, I'm looking down, north here is up, and there are three strings attached to it, each with a tension force T1, T2, or T3. T1, in this case, would have a magnitude T1. It's in newtons. This is the unit here. The direction is 45 degrees north of east. For tension 2, it has a magnitude T2, also in newtons, and its direction would be west. It's in that direction. T3, then, has a magnitude T3 in newtons, and its direction is 30 degrees south of east. In my final example, I want to look at the tension around a pulley because the pulley can change the direction of a string. So if I want to look at mass 1, there's a tension on mass 1 due to the string. It's a tension. It has magnitude T1, units of newtons. And here, the direction would be to the right, because it's pulling away from mass 1. If I look at mass 2, the tension would be up with a magnitude T2 in this case, units of newtons again, because it's pulling away from the mass. So I'm looking at two separate objects here, mass 1, the tension is away from the mass, and if I look at a different mass, a different object, here the tension is up. So in this case, the pulley is changing the direction that the string goes. The magnitude of the tension is the same everywhere in a string between two contact points with objects with mass. So as long as the string connects two objects with mass and there's no other contact with a massive object between them, then the tension everywhere is the same. For example, in this case, assuming the pulley is massless, then the tension in this part of the string is equal to the magnitude of the tension in this part of the string, and T1 is equal to T2. But remember, that assumes that the pulley is massless because there's a contact point here. If the pulley has mass, which we will get to later in the course, then this no longer holds.